right, welcome back. Um, probably seeing this video though, a week from now, we are gonna get started on this fuselage build. So, like I said on the, let's get you a little closer. I know the light's not great over here. I should put it. Used to have a light to get in here over here. Anyways, we're gonna start building this fuselage, and I want to keep using this four foot table to build this. I built a quarter scale cub on this, said cub on there with a 108 inch wingspan. So don't tell me you need a lot of space to build an airplane. <laughs> Anyways, you just got to get a little creative. You might have to even break the fuselage into two pieces. And that's what we're going to do here. So what we got going on here, I don't see if I can get you in here real close. Um, the front half of the fuselage is all balsa. And then you got a plywood for a uh, doubler behind that. And then, so anyways, from this point here back is all stick built. So we're going to build the two um, stick, we're sticks, as stick sections, or whatever you want to call it back here first. Um, I'll explain what I'm going to do. I'll throw you guys on time lapse because this is going to take some time. I've already cut out all the sticks that I think I need. I got, still got the uh, bandsaw set up for, uh, um, um yeah for the wood that i'm going to use anyways again this is this thing uses 5 16 inch square boss wood and i don't have any i don't god i don't want to order any i got plenty of wood around here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to the thickness is more important than the width so i took my three eighths that i have and i sliced it down to 5 16 inch thick see like so but we're gonna leave the three eighths wide. It's it's like two. I think I think I when I I'm not very good at measurements. <laughs> Amazing, I can build in the airplanes, right? But when I when I looked at it on measurements, it's like it's like two sixteenths inch wider than it, it ain't much. I mean, it just it's just there ain't much there. So, anyways, I'm gonna get this laid down. I'm gonna build this much in the same way fashion they built the stabilizer and the fin. Um, we're just going to lay this out. We're going to get all the trusses cut and the angles cut. And I'm going to make one modification. I'm going to go a little longer here. And then, uh, what I'll do is I'll just cut a, a step out of my balsa wood. When I go to join these, the nose and the tail sections together. And, uh, um, that way I can, uh, have a little bit of bite there i know you probably don't need to do that it's probably a little overkill but eh why not you know i'm here i like doing that kind of like doing that stuff you know just just a little extra strength um goes a long way so we're going to build the tail section that'll be from here back uh we'll make a splice here because the um in the factory spot so we'll make the make a uh um make a good slice there you always go five times longer than the thickness of your wood so you know we don't want to butt it you want to do a splice like this and we'll put an angle in it we'll do it just like the plane show so you might catch me doing that a little bit i think i've shown that before um how to make a good that's what i'm looking for scarf joint a good scarf joint in there uh it won't fail not at all, especially where he's got it, got the plywood die he, or doubler behind it. So, anyways, that's what I'm gonna do here. We're gonna get this thing framed up. Um, the only thing that uh, differs from uh, uh, fin and stabilizers, we need two halves. So once I get the first one set up um, and built, then I just I I will build the other side right on top of the first side that uh ensures that you have two identical sides working from so you know like i said plants can vary a little bit the uh your building technique you know you might get a get a little bit outside the line here or there you want them you want side by side you want them to be the same and that's how you accomplish that so we'll start on one side we'll leave it on the table we'll pin it and then as i start building the other one we'll remove pins and pin the new side to the to the old side make sense uh follow along if you uh um and if you guys have like i said if you guys ever have any questions on what i'm doing here 
or uh, stuff that I do you need more in depth, uh, feel free to ask. So get you on time lapse and we'll get this fish built. All right, well, I uh, I canceled the time lapse there for a while, especially after the uh, telephone, my camera fell off my mount there. I'm like, eh, screw it. You've seen me cut balls so a million times. Uh, I just wanted to point out a few things here. We did get the, uh, went ahead and spent a couple hours and got this all framed in. Um, when you're, I know this isn't, I've even had some guys ask me that I would call fairly experienced builders asked me about building from building of you know stick structure like this truss truss structure whatever you want to call it i call it building with sticks um the nice thing about sticks is that you know you do not need a lot of balsa wood to make a fairly big structure um you know or you know a few slides you guys can take kind of the points of this if you're building your own plane you know, maybe you got a set of wings you need a fuselage for and you don't know what to do. Well, you know, sticks are, are you know, economical. They're, you know, pretty cheap. And, you know, you, you end up with a pretty light, strong structure because it's, you know, bridges and stuff. And you can, there, there's so much you can do with this. I mean, you can take a plane that, you know, has a lot of sheet balsa, you know, a few sides and convert it over to stick build. I mean, there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with this style of building. It's a little tedious with all the angle cuts. So anyways, basically you want to support everything. So, you know, I always say, you know, it's not that important that you get it perfect from side to side, like these angles here, like, you know, that you follow this all the way up to a T. Um, I always try to end up with joints like this in critical areas. You can see where I cut there and then I cut here to triangulate this so you get more glue joint in there. I mean, this, this is a pretty important area with uh, the wing saddle on that. You don't want to, you know, be ripping balsa wood out when you're just flying the thing. Um, so anyways, you know, you got that going on. We got one down here at the tail there's just not much there to support and then you got you know see how i do this is basically just like a destabilizer i start with my outer structure i work out and then i work in um i like to try to do my long long sticks first and then work my way to the smaller ones so that way if i you know make any mistakes or whatever it's a smaller piece of balsa wood that i gotta um, come up with to to fix that mistake or whatnot you know cut a piece too short or too long or I mean too short uh, the proper way to do this another way you can now I've done this a million times and I've kind of developed my own uh, you know f style for doing this I used to take and cut every stick and then pin it to the table no glue and dry fit everything and then I would grab my thin bottle of CA and I would go through and just start from left to right and do every joint that way and uh, that way I always thought was a little on the time consuming sp thing um, you know you cut your sticks a little longer with the angle in them like an eighth of an inch longer quarter inch longer and then you sand until everything just fits quite right uh, you know if you're if you're an inexperienced at this that might be the way to go for the first time the biggest thing is is uh you know remember where your surfaces are at you know the wing's gonna sit here okay and then you know your stabilizer is gonna f sit here so you want these to be flat you know we got a little bit of wing incidence in here i forgot we were gonna do low wing conversion on this <laughs> just just came to my mind like i already built one side We'll deal with that in a little bit. <laughs> Anyhow, so, 
you know, that's the biggest thing. You know, we got this crutch in the middle. You know, this is going to support servos and stuff like that. You know, and we're going to have plywood throughout this thing. These get Lexane through the middle of them for windows. So, anyhow, that's where we're at. Um, I'm probably going to call it a night here. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, get, uh... Uh, get some get some food in my stomach, and I don't know if I will. I'll probably get the other side framed up tomorrow, and uh, maybe just with some slight modifications to that. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I wanted to do a low wing. I've, God, it's been a long week. Merry Christmas, right? Happy New Year. Anyhow, that's where we're at. We will. Uh, uh, We'll see you when we uh, bring it back on and we got a little bit more done. I'll get the other side framed up and then we'll move on to the nose. All right, well, got back from supper. That pizza hut, yummy. <laughs> and uh, went ahead and pulled the plans out from behind the uh, fuse because uh, no need to tear apart uh, pl borrowed uh, plans there when I'm, when I'm done using them. And like I said, I honestly did completely forget about doing uh doing a low wing conversion i was just going to town and had my mindset on uh getting this fuselage framed up today and so anyways had to do a little bit of backtracking so what i did i'm going to show you guys how simple this can be on the plans there's a positive three quarters of a degree of incidence in the bottom wing or three, yeah, three quarters of a degree. So, being a flat bottom wing, you can lower it down to the bottom and run. What I'm going to do here is and this is just initial stuff here. Just run it, the bottom of the fuselage is flat. So, I'm going to take the bottom of the flat part of the fuselage or the flat part bottom of the wing. If I can talk, are you guys looking there? Yeah, you can see, all right? Okay. And I marked, I traced on my sticks, you know, I don't know if you can, how well you can see that. I traced on my sticks where my airfoil touches. This top of this wing's done. There's going to be some fine tuning. I mean, we're going to have to still get that three quarters, uh, three quarters of a degree, I think it said, of incidence in the wing because that's what the manufacturer is. So I cut that, or I marked that out, and I went ahead and cut that out. And that's what we're left with. Okay, so then, obviously, and all I did was I just took the wing from where it was at and the initial, the initial wing, you know, it sat here. Right, like this, and I just dropped it straight down. I guess I can, I'm kind of working in the corner here, so you have to bear with me. So that's where it was going to initially be at. Okay. And then all I did is I dropped it straight down. Same location in the fuselage. I didn't move it front or back. Just moved it straight down. It's flat up here. It's flat down here. And see. And now. You can see that fits that real nice. Okay. So the next modification we got to do now, we can't leave, obviously can't leave these here. This is all going to be weak. So what I'll do next is I'll take some of my scrap here and I'm going to run it in there in between there and frame this in like so. It's pretty straight, so it should be all right. Probably going to have to come in here once the plane's built. And we're going to have to get this thing, the fuselage leveled, and we'll get that three quarters of a degree incidence, positive incidence in the wing. And that's going to require some sanding. I'm not going to get into that. You can't set. You could probably do some, get it close. But anyways, my idea here is, is I'm going to have to sand this wing saddle anyways. So, you know, I mean, if I got to, you know, carve a little bit more out up here to right, push this wing in, wing up some. You know, I guess be right in this area here, where the wing saddle will be at. 
So we're going to go ahead and do our plywood doubler on the inside once we get this all built and framed in. Or get the, get the sides built. And then I'll cut that airfoil out in there. And epoxy that in. That'll be part of our wing saddle. This doesn't get sheeted. This front up here gets sheeted. So anyhow, that's where we're at. Um, just wanted to uh, show you guys the modification to do that you could do this to any plane it could at senior a senorita uh you know the, the high wing planes can be low wing you know high wing planes can be uh low wingers too uh no particular reason for doing it other than just uh like i said in the beginning of the, the series here it's something i've always wanted to do was uh you know take one of these old old high wing trainers and make it a low wing Make it look nicer. We'll do something uh, with the cabin. Uh, we'll have to figure that part of it out. So it's supposed to go up some. I doubt it will. So we'll figure that out when we get to that front part of that fuselage. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, and since I went ahead and pulled the, and I'm going to be building on top of this, I just took my T-pins. I don't know if you can see them there. There you go. And I just put them in the perimeter. And I locked this in. This ain't going nowhere. I locked it in. Stabilizer there. Top, bottom. Several pins. And I'll be able to build right on top of this thing. So anyways, I'm going to get that all framed up. And uh, so I'll, uh, I'll bring it back in when we got more progress. Well, hello there. Um, I'm not sure where we're at on this video with the Flying King yet. But uh, um, I do know that we're going to end this uh, video here, so um, I'm not going to be able to get much more done recording due to work obligations uh, next week and parties for the weekend. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and uh, enjoy the new year. I thought we would just go over real quick where I'm at and what I'm looking to do for next year. So um, I'll get you flipped around here. Sorry about that. I've been uh, kind of tidying the shop up a little bit. It's it's a damn, it's a dang mess in here. This is, uh, um, believe it or not, a pretty vast improvement over there. Uh, anyways, I'll give you a quick glimpse at a project that I've started here. It's pretty big. Yep. That's going to be a different episode. It'll probably take me a few months to get that out. Uh, I'm going to do, do something a little different there with... With that tail end of that fuselage right there. Yep. Um, anyways, been working on that and the Flying King uh, simultaneously. Um, between projects, you'll probably get a little... If you guys are good at watching the video here, you'll see what I'm working on. <laughs> the plans in the visa right there. Anyways, the uh, Flying King... Oh, we made a mess. We did get the... Uh, I haven't worked on the teleservices since building them. But, um, did get part of the second fuselage here. Let's see, there's another fuselage on top of that one. Did start uh, getting that framed in. Um, I'll probably finish that up sometime today. Get it off the table. And then we can transfer it over to the big table. I gotta get some, uh, either make some wood or, uh, for the nose section. And then get that joined up. I don't know if I'll get to that today. We gotta leave here in a little bit. And I got a lot of videos to edit and get that out to you today. So, anyways, uh, future plans. Uh, next year, I want to get the Flying King. I want to get this thing flying. I want to get it done this this winter yet. Um, we still got oh probably three or four months worth of work to do there. Um, I want to get the antique up in the air. I haven't even touched that. Um, this year did get the motor started. I don't think I took any video of that. So we want to get that, that up and flying. That's a new to me plane. Fly baby. That'll get done this year. That's almost done. So I got like maybe two and a half, three months of building season left. Um, before I got to get on to, uh, uh, some of these little projects here. Uh, I got the freeze fly going on tomorrow, so I got to get ready for that. Hopefully, we'll see the knife um, main voyage tomorrow, depending on how windy it's going to be. 
supposed to be pretty cold 38 degrees tomorrow but uh that'll uh that'll kind of partake in uh um yeah what's the words i'm looking for <laughs> that'll kind of uh determine what i'm going to take tomorrow whether it's like the four star 20 with electric so i can get up fly and be done we usually cook chili and stuff like that and uh i usually have a pretty good turnout might you know that's that all i need to do to take the the uh pogo stick out is throw it on the charger that's always been a pretty reliable plane in the cold so anyhow um i'm gonna like i said i'm gonna end this here uh hopefully we can get a couple of these projects uh wrapped up here pretty soon flying king especially i think it's uh once we get the major building done here probably in the next two to three weeks get the fuselage framed up it's goes generally pretty quick but like they say 90 percent done and 80 80 95 percent left to go so <laughs> you guys know how it is so anyways i want to thank you guys for a great year um been uh i think i've been doing the youtube now for a year so we are up to 60 some subscribers now i appreciate every single one of you and uh let's uh let's see what we can uh hash out in the next year so anyways you guys have a good new year's and we will see you next year